Hi, today I've just received this GPS module through the post. This is a Trimble SV6, uh, approximately 1995 vintage from a seller called Wombat on eBay. Um, he did have two for sale, I think the other one's just gone in the past day or two. Um, and I saw it on there, I thought I may as well just purchase it and see what we can do with it um, after the defeat of not being able to get any data out of my GPS disciplined oscillator. So let's take it down to the bench, uh, we'll have a quick look at the board and then we'll see if we can get any data out of it. So these are the items which arrived in the post. Obviously we've got the GPS board itself, uh, we've got a power connector for the 12 volt supply with a Molex connector on the end which just plugs in on this side of the board here. And it's got a couple of spade terminals on the end, presumably from the piece of equipment that it was previously connected to. There's then a GPS uh, antenna connector with an SMB connector on this end. And then the actual antenna itself connects to this end connector, which was probably panel mounted in a piece of equipment. And then he also shipped a CD with the instruction manual on it, which is uh, very handy because I couldn't actually find uh, the manual anymore online. So let's have a closer look at the board. So let's have a closer look at the PCB itself. Starting in the top left hand corner here we have the GPS antenna connector and this is an SMB style connector and it looks to be a nice high quality shielded part that they've used on the board here. Moving down we have the crystal oscillator and this is a temperature compensated 16.368 MHz oscillator which has some compensation circuitry built into it to try and reduce the drift in frequency due to changes in ambient temperature. Moving down the board a bit more, if we look at the two chips on the right hand side uh, with the Trimble marking TNL, these are custom gate arrays which have the satellite tracking circuitry and also some support circuitry to uh, work with the microprocessor which is on the underside of the board. On the left, we have uh, the frequency synthesizer. So this is taking the 16.368 megahertz uh, frequency in and then providing the frequency for the mixer on the receiver and also for providing the uh, frequency for operating the microprocessor, probably the UART and some of the other chips on the board as well. If we then move across the board, we have an AMD 27C2048, which is a 2 megabit EEPROM. And then if we move up the board slightly, we have an SCC2691, which is a UART chip, uh, because uh, this doesn't have a microcontroller on the board, it has a microprocessor on the board, which basically has no peripherals built in. So additional things like the UART and the RTC are usually completely separate to that. And here we have an Epson 72423 real-time clock chip. Um, this is presumably just offloading the RTC tasks um, so that the processor can spend its time doing GPS type activities. If we then move up the board slightly, um, you can see a little SO8 package. And this is an SN75179 differential driver and receiver pair. So. This was actually advertised as an RS-232 interface, but it looks like this is fitted with the RS-422 option. Uh, so we may have to build a little bit of circuitry before we can interface this with the PC. Then as we move down the board slightly, uh, you can see the power connector. So there's three pins, power, battery and ground. I don't think this is fitted with an option for uh, just powering the RTC from the battery, uh, but we'll have to have a look at that. And that's just a 12 volt input, which draws approximately 200 milliamps while in use. And then as we move down the board here, we've just got a couple of um, tantalum capacitors. Uh, we've got an interesting filter here. I think this is a common mode choke. It's got four connections on it, so I'm presuming it's a common mode choke. Um, and then we've just got a couple of passives. So let's take a look at the underside of the board to see what's on the other side. So here we have the underside of the PCB. If we start looking at the left hand side again, uh, you can see some power supply circuitry here. We've got a couple of SOT223 regulators, various tantalum capacitors and another filter. 
And then here you can see the Motorola 16-bit microprocessor with 512 kilobits of SRAM underneath. We've got a couple of logic chips to the right of that. And then let's move up to the top right hand side. So this is where the GPS antenna connects to. And this is where the preamplifier is. So you can see a small black package there, which is a transistor for the preamplifier. And we've got various passives for uh, matching. And then if we move down the board, you can see where the actual um, GPS signal is demodulated and fed into the uh, GPS receiver custom gate arrays. So that's an overall kind of view of the PCB itself. Um, so now let's try and build a bit of hardware so that we can talk to the RS422 interface. So the instruction manual for the GPS receiver has the pinout for the RS422 interface. So you can see here we've got the differential pair for the transmit, differential pair for the receive and then a ground pin and we also have the one pulse per second output. There's also an option for a second uh, DB9 connector on the board but that's not fitted on mine. So up on screen here we have the data sheet for the 75179 differential driver and receiver pair which is fitted to the GPS receiver board and you can see that all it consists of is a differential to single-ended driver and a single-ended to differential driver and this is all contained within the package um, so the microcontroller or whatever interfaces on the single-ended side and then we've got four wires um, for the differential signal which are then transmitted to uh, whatever uh, piece of equipment connected to the other end. So I've had a quick look through my collection and I can't find any RS422 transceivers but I've got lots of RS485 transceivers. The difference between the two interfaces is that rather than the two pairs of wires, one for transmit and one for receive on the RS422 interface, which is more suited to a point-to-point -point, um, transmission system, the RS485 bus has a single pair of wires which deal with both the transmit and receive of the data. So you can see on the driver here we've got, if you've got your logic on this side, um, you can transmit by enabling the DE line and you can receive by enabling the RE line. So typically there'd be one device transmitting at once and the others would be listening and then w when the bus goes clear or when they've got their allocated time slot they'll enable the transmitter and then they can transmit data. Um, so there is the possibility of contention on this bus style network and the interface itself doesn't um, state how contention is de dealt with, that's up to the implementation. But basically what I can do here is I can use two of these RS485 transceivers. So I can set one up for tran uh, transmit, um, so we just enable the transmitter on here and it discard the, the bottom part of the uh, driver here. And then for the receive then we just do the same thing but get rid of the top half, uh, enable the receiver and on the second pair of wires we can then receive using this differential receiver. So I'm going to build up a little circuit on the breadboard and we'll try that out. So I'll just quickly explain how I've wired this up. Um, at the top here we have um, the DB9 connector which is on the GPS module. So I've connected up pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 9 which are the transmit differential pair, the receive differential pair, ground and one pulse per second 
with the yellow, orange, green, blue, black and violet wires coming from my connector. And I did just uh, probe out the 75179 transceiver that's on the board and just check it correctly correlates to uh, the pin mapping on the DB9 connector. So we have the inverted uh, input and output on pin 2 and 3 and the normal on pin 1 and 4. And the violet wire, the uh, 1 pulse per second, is an open collector output. And then on the RS485 transceiver, for the receive channel, which is the right-hand chip on the breadboard, we only need to use one part of the transceiver. So we're using the receive part. Uh, the transmitter is grounded, and then uh, for the direction control, we just set um, them both to zero. And that means that um, any signal that's passing from the differential side will get passed straight through to the single-ended side. And similarly, on the transmit side here, we're just using the opposite uh, buffer that's built into the other RS485 chip. So we're just using the single-ended transmit to uh, differential output. And we just need to set those two enable registers both to high. So I've connected up the GPS receiver here. Um, I've not yet powered it up, but on the right here we've got the Fluke 289, which is going to be measuring the supply voltage. Uh, the Fluke 87, just to check the power consumption, we should be seeing approximately 200 milliamps being drawn, um, and the incoming supply voltage needs to be in the range of 9 to 32 volts, so I've set it to around 12 volts. And then with the meter on the left, we're just going to check that the GPS... Uh, antenna connector will power the antenna otherwise I'll need to power the antenna separately. So if I just power up the device now and that's set to around 12 volts so we're drawing 190 milliamps so that seems about right and then if we just measure the voltage on the connector here we're getting 4.85 volts so that's fine, so now we can connect up the antenna and we can see if we can get any data out from the device. So before we connect the breadboard to the GPS receiver, I thought I'd just check that the circuitry is working correctly. So we've got the PC connected to the MAX232, which is at the top of the breadboard, and then that feeds into both of the RS485 transceivers. And on the oscilloscope here, the yellow trace is the RS-232 input from the PC, so that's on the PC's transmit line. So if I type characters into hyperterminal, uh, we should be able to see characters appearing on that yellow trace. And then the turquoise and uh, purple traces, channel 2 and 3, are the differential output from the transmitter RS-485 uh, transceiver. So you can see at the moment one's close to 0 volts and one's close to 5 volts and these should always be complementary to each other. So if I start typing some characters now you can see the Rigol's decoding those correctly um, and if we just stop on one here uh, this is lowercase character U and you can see the RS-232 input from the PC and then the differential output here you can see the non-inverting um, goes high for each of the ones and the inverting output goes low for each of the ones. So that seems to be working correctly. So now we can connect up the GPS receiver and um, see if we can get any data out. So here we have the connector from the GPS antenna which is outside. Um, so we need to just connect an adapter to that because that's a TNC connector and we need the N type so I've got an TNC to N connector and then we can connect the N connector um, that came with the GPS receiver and then plug that into the antenna connector on the GPS receiver board. So that's all connected up nicely and then we can plug in the serial connector So now let's power up the GPS receiver and see if we can see any data on the data lines. So now um, this differential pair here is the data coming from the GPS receiver and then the yellow trace is our line which is going from the RS-485 transceiver to the PC.
Yeah, and we definitely seem to be getting some data coming through. Um, I think the TSIP protocol is a binary protocol, so the ASCII representation of the data coming through at the bottom here isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but we're definitely getting some data coming through. And it seems to uh, be updating itself, so there's data coming through every few seconds. Um, so let me try finding some software to run on the PC to see if we can read any data from the GPS module. So here you can see I've downloaded Trimble GPS Studio and it's managing to communicate perfectly with the GPS receiver board. So on the right hand side here you can see there's six satellites that it's locked onto and then in the middle we have a bit of diagnostics information. We can see the firmware was written all the way back in 1994 and it's just still doing the position fixes at the moment although it has locked onto those six satellites. Also in the middle there you can see a couple of yellow lights next to BB RAM which I'm assuming is battery backed RAM and RTC. So you can apply power to that third pin on the power connector and it will store some of the GPS data if you happen to lose power and also keep the RTC running. So obviously as it's not been powered up and uh, no power has been supplied to that pin it's displaying a yellow symbol just to say that it wasn't able to find any data when the GPS module powered up. And then on the left hand side you can see we've got the area for the time which is correct but the date is completely wrong. Um, I'm not quite sure why the date's wrong at the moment but it looks like you can uh, upload the time from the PC and then it correctly keeps the calendar. So I'm not quite sure what I'm planning on doing with the GPS receiver at the moment. Uh, I kind of purchased it on a whim and just thought it might be quite fun to play around with it. But at some point I might um, try and actually build a GPS disciplined oscillator from scratch. Um, and it is possible to do with a receiver that only has a one pulse per second output. But obviously it's a lot better if you can find one that has a higher frequency output. So um, maybe I'll do something with it. I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, anyway... Thanks for watching and I hope you found that at least a little bit interesting. Um, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I've set up the... <laughs> Misty, no. Ah, go away. <laughs> Misty. Misty.